What is interesting about the place is the amount of attention that you get. What can happen is people in a college environment maybe sometimes don't know that they're making a piece of good work or they don't know that that piece of work is at a stage where it is actually rather good and then they nobble it. So I think one of the things that, that happens here, we move into a certain mode where you can tell that somebody has maybe started to get a bit tetchy, a bit edgy with their work and they're about to damage it actually and you try and get in there and try and stop them and then you can have a discussion about why something's working, why it's a good point and why it's probably quite a good thing to walk away not just keep working, just for the sake of it. Generally, a student arriving on a painting, including materials course, could expect to be introduced to correct priming of supports using traditional materials to prepare their own colours. And it's quite enjoyable seeing the thrill that the student gets when they open the first tube that they've ground by hand and how strong the colour is compared to the colour that they're accustomed to using. I feel that this gives more control to the student over the outcome of their work. It's all about seeing what's important is for somebody to learn their connection between how they see something, how they want to make it and how they are actually making it so they can feel like they have control over that. Whether or not people just end up painting like other people is besides the point because everybody is doing that to some degree. You're always painting like somebody that you've liked. I don't think anybody is original. One of the workshops is the use of monochromatic underpainting as a way of developing form, creating context, where battles are won before the battle of understanding colour commences. The other thing we try and dispel is that it doesn't just come like that. There's quite a lot of effort has to go into it. Sometimes people are a little bit distressed, perhaps, that it can't be learnt off a piece of A4 paper and picked up over a very short period of time. It's a bit like language, you have to learn the basics first. Here it's like a gym. You learn to do it, you train, and then I, I would send people out and say, if you love food, you paint food. If you like dogs, you paint dogs. If you like France, you paint France. And you paint, you paint whatever you love. People come here and they know that somehow you know, they're going to represent the model or the, you know, the space or the still life. But it gives you the muscle to then go out and you go home and you, and you paint, paint the dog. A potential student will be exposed to materials and knowledge that I feel sadly neglected elsewhere, um, even in top London art schools. I think uh, there's not really the great emphasis on methods and on the craft any longer. The tuition is, is good as anywhere. We provide quite an intensive and personalised education. No one is anonymous here, which can happen in bigger places. We have older artists who are returning and they find it absolutely life enhancing and so it should be. And we have younger people whose aspiration is to be an artist. And it is proven, as far as I can see, the visual evidence seems to be that it massively enhances their life also. Art changes lives, and that's what we do.